Next up, I want to talk about the San Francisco 49ers. Their over-under is 10 games. This is a team that played the Rams and maybe should have made the Super Bowl last year with Jimmy Garoppolo. They lose a few guys. They lose Lakin Tomlinson to the Jets. They lose Raheem Mostert, DJ Jones, and Arden Key in the front seven. Uh, they're soon to lose Jimmy Garoppolo. At the time of this recording, he has not been traded yet. Uh, they bring in Charvarius Ward at corner, Orjan Burks at linebacker, or Orjan Burge. They have no first-round pick, so they use their second-round pick on a defensive end, Drake Jackson, from USC. Then in the third round, they bring in two skill players. They bring in Tyrion Davis-Price, the running back from LSU, and then Danny Gray, the wide receiver from SMU, who is getting some hype pre-draft as being a sort of underrated, underrated guy. What I like about this team, looking at, at the Niners going into this season, is the fact that if you look at some of the underlying metrics from last year, they shouldn't have even done as well as they did. They shouldn't have been in the NFC title game. They shouldn't have been a dropped interception away from the Super Bowl. And the reason for that is because they were the third most injured team last season after being the most injured team the prior year. So over the last two seasons, there's been only one game where the Niners have had their quarterback one, their running back one, their tight end one, and their wide receiver one and wide receiver two, all starting. So that is how injured this team has been. They can't get their full offensive unit out there. They've had it out for one game in two years. When looking at this roster coming into this year, we have to expect that there's going to be some regression in that regard. And listen, you could say that the Rams, uh, the Niners' injury luck uh, could have regressed for the last five years, could have regressed to the mean, could have regressed to a more normal level where they weren't losing a bunch of starters every year, and you would have been wrong every year. But I have to think, and, and I'm going to be optimistic about this, I'm going to say that this is the year the Rams don't ha lose their entire roster to injury. And on top of that, some of the other teams in their division have had much better injury luck. So the Rams in particular last year were the least injured team or one of the least injured teams in the NFL. So if some of that injury luck sways one way or another, we could see a situation where a Rams team that didn't have a lot of depth to them is now fighting for a, a, a division title against a Niners team that has historically been injured but finally puts it all together. I really think that the Niners are due for some good luck on the injury front. But any assessment of the Niners really turns on whether you believe in Trey Lance. And so far, I think the general consensus is no. People watched him play last year. He looked very raw, but he was always going to be a project quarterback. What you were looking at really was his skill set, his not necessarily his ability to process the field at an NFL level yet, but in his games that he gets to play and gets to start, he looked very much the part as an NFL rusher. Uh, he showed flashes in his last start against the Texans as, as of being a really competent NFL passer, especially in the second half of that game. But to me, I think this Niners bet or any Niners bet on their over-under or, or their outcome this year is one of the riskier bets on the board because the variance between whether Trey Lance is going to be a competent quarterback or not is so high. And Trey Lance is really the biggest issue or the biggest determinant of how this Niners season goes. If Trey Lance is subpar, I could see this Niners team very much going under, winning seven or seven or eight games. But if he is good, if he is as advertised an above average quarterback who really opens up some of this Kyle Shanahan playbook, we could be looking at a, at a Niners team that's making another run at a Super Bowl run. I didn't know where to go with this. I didn't know where to end up on the Trey Lance issue. But one thing that gave me some guidance here is that Trey Lance falls into a really opportunistic situation this year just by virtue of playing four of his first six games as an NFL starter uh, against some of the worst teams in the NFL. So he plays the Tanking Bears, the Seahawks, the Panthers, and the Falcons all within his first six games. Obviously, he plays I think, the Chiefs and the Rams within that six-game period too, so it's not all coming up aces for Trey Lance. But... I will say that that's about as soft landing as you can give to a young quarterback in the league, especially a raw young guy like Trey Lance. So assuming that Trey Lance can take advantage of some of these soft starting positions, some of these bad teams he's going to be playing early in the year to hopefully build strong habits and have his coach and that coaching staff coach him up and build him into a confident starting quarterback because that confidence is really important for these young guys. I'm buying into Trey Lance and I'm buying into the Niners going over their projected win total of 10 games. Now let's talk briefly about prop bets. For the Niners, I, I said this a little bit before, but I think there's a lot of value in picking the Niners to win the NFC West. Just by virtue of the fact that the Rams were very lucky injury-wise last year, typically those stats do not follow from year to year. Teams do not typically have good or bad injury luck from year to year, except the Niners thus far. So I think at plus 175, there's a lot of value in the Niners. If you believe in Trey Lance, if you think the bill comes finally due for this Rams team in terms of how they've constructed their roster, uh, trading a lot of first-round picks, lacking that depth in favor of the stars and studs approach, 
I think that the Rams to or the Niners to win the NFC West at plus 175 is a fun, smaller, long shot play here. And I also, in that same vein, my next prop for the Niners is Trey Lance over five and a half rushing touchdowns at minus 120. So Trey Lance, even in his limited playing time last year, really looked good to me as a rusher. Uh, He was a little reckless with how he put his head down sometimes in the middle of the field. But I think that even if Trey Lance has a ways to go as a passer and he may develop over the course of this season and have some ugly moments, I think as a runner in the red zone, Shanahan is eager to make use of Trey's athletic gifts. Whether he's a complete player in that regard or not I I fail to see a world in which Trey Lance is playing 15 to 17 games and not going over five and a half rushing touchdowns I think this is a smash play maybe my favorite prop that we've talked about so far I I just don't see a world where where this doesn't go over 